I got a great guy to introduce you to right now, handsome son of a gun. I just, somehow it's just my luck today. Um, sitting next to me is um, somebody you should admire. Um, his name is Tommy Gibb. His brother Tim and he are founders of a company called Title. It is a company that manufactures flip-flops. We're going to talk about why they're so cool and unique. And why I'm attracted to them is I couldn't believe they moved the manufacturing to New Rochelle, New York, my hometown, number one. Thank you, buddy Vi, for pointing the story out to me. And people, you know, always keep me uh, posted on cool things. I love innovation, love entrepreneurship, and I love when people figure out how to do not only something cool but good for the world at the same time. So, hi. Good morning. How it's a long you? wait to get your turn here because we were going to go up earlier. Hey, Tom. Hey, Debbie. How you doing? Good to meet you. I want to talk about um, you and your brother and your family, if I may, and uh, how you got into the flip-flop business and why they're so fabulous and why my toe hurts when I put the thing in the thing in the middle. So let's start with where are you from, Kansas? Uh, actually, we were born in Nebraska. I knew it was close. I knew it was far away. Like, where do these people come from? Nebraska. You came from Nebraska. No wonder you look so wholesome. You're like really wholesome looking. <laughs> Nobody wears flip flops in, in Nebraska. Correct. <laughs> Nobody wears flip flops in Nebraska. So now you got a guy and brother from a family business of shoes who went into the title flip flop business. What did your father do? Tell everybody. That's kind of cool. So uh, growing up, my dad was in the wholesale footwear business, and he actually ran the international division for Nine West Group here in Westchester. And um, actually, Timmy and I grew up around footwear and retail accessories. They, my parents owned stores prior to my father going into wholesale. And um, we were moved out to the East Coast when I was five years old. And uh, I actually went to school to be a banker. And uh, tying back to 9-11, I graduated uh, from Penn State in 2001 and was going to Wall Street. Um, I graduated in August, wow. had an October start date, and 9-11 happened in the middle. There was the bank I was going to work for laid off, consequently, 6,000 people. The world more or less ended um, through a series of events. Um, my father suggested I, I had moved out to Colorado, and uh, I was a ski bum for a little bit. <laughs> you know, you look, you make a good ski bum. <laughs> and my father suggested I come back to reality. And uh, I hate when they do that, don't <laughs> you, when the parents suggest coming back to reality? And Such I, a bad suggestion. I started working at Nine West Group, and... Um, from there went on to a company here in Greenwich, Mark Fisher Footwear, who's one of the founder of Nine West Sun, and uh, worked with them for 12 years and um, produced a lot of shoes for a lot of big brands. And um, Your story is fairly amazing, um, particularly. Can I just move my mic a little, Bob? I'd like you to. Would you like me to? I always makes a big scene noise when I do that. I have to tell him. Um, thank you. The fact that you were on your way to Wall Street during 9-11's, you know, moment there, and we're the day after 9-11, 15 years later, and you had to take another path. Um, does that every year mean more and more to you that you had no choice, so you made a choice that's actually having an impact on the world that's sort of relevant? Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, me and my brother take a step back whenever we can to just think about what we've done and, and – and, you know, a lot of people talk about making change or making America great again, and, and we're really trying to do it on the ground and uh, do everything we can in, in our sphere of influence. You stare at people's feet all day for a living. <laughs> I can't imagine how many feet. You don't look at people the same way most people look at me. Don't you always look down at their feet? Uh, I am guilty of that. Do you like feet? Uh, feet are an interesting uh, part of the body. but uh... How many bad feet have you come across in your day? Significant. What percentage of people have nice feet? Uh, well, I mean, we're Come on, what business, so everybody I mean, has nice I feet now. I have my second toe is bigger than my first toe. I don't exactly want to showcase my feet all the time, but on a hot day, I want to wear flip-flops. Mm -hmm. These are gorgeous, mm -hmm. and um, they're different because they're comfortable. They're, they're very – they're not – cheap flip-flops. They're qu high-quality flip-flops. And also, if you look at the pattern, this is an art uh, – who is this? Whose pattern? Keith Herring. Keith Herring. You guys not only are making quality products, but you're licensing cool artwork to put on them. Who chooses the artwork, and how does the deal go? So, uh, you know, we, we decided when we developed this product and the way we print our shoes, we have a really innovative printing process, and we wanted to showcase that, and what better way to do that than with art. And um, we hooked up with a few artists past and present, um, 
and, and secured licenses with the Foundation for Key Caring and Jean-Michel Basquiat. We also work with Peter Tunney, who's still a local artist down in Chinatown. Um, and it's been a really cool experience because we have innovative um, processes and we wanted to show iconic artwork. How'd you get to New Rochelle to open a manufacturing plant? You would think that wouldn't be a, um, a cost-effective place to be, being so close to New York City, and yet that's exactly why you chose it. Yes, New York, New Rochelle was like a, a, a pretty easy choice for us. You know, when, when we started to look around for space, um, we, we landed in New Rochelle, and it's got great proximity to New York, which is the fashion you know, hub of the universe, and it gives us a lot of flexibility to have customers out and showcase where we're making the shoes. You know, a lot of people make assumptions about where footwear is produced, how it's produced. We're happy to show and proud to show it, and what better place than 18 miles out of Midtown. Okay, very cool. Now, um, to, uh, manufacturing made in America. Um, you used to go to China a lot. Correct. So at what point did you decide you didn't want to go to China anymore to do this? Um, and, and how did you figure out how to make it affordable to open a manufacturing plant in America? I think it's a critical um, question. So that's a great, great question. And, and it was our you know, biggest point of analysis. And, you know, China wins on labor. You know, there's a, there's a huge labor advantage in China. And, um, you know, my brother and I, he's also was in footwear production for major wholesale companies in America. And... We were spending um, between us over 120 days a year, you know, around the world producing shoes. And there's a growing issue here um, where you have rising FOB costs and, uh, you know, there's not a lot of inflation in, in, in fashion and retail right now. And so that margin compression has led to creativity and looking at things differently. FOB, for those who don't know, means what? Uh, freight on board or cost of goods purchased um, okay, outside freight of the country. On board. Um, I've been noticing and talking to a lot of people who are in the fashion business who are very concerned that people aren't buying clothes. Correct. It's, it's a real... People uh, are not buying clothes. I mean, from major high-end brands down to um, the average, you know, clothing manufacturers, even ties, and people are changing their way. What do you attribute this to? I think, um, you know, that the market got oversaturated with a lot of product that, that's more or less the same. And I think the consumers are uh, have more visibility, you know, the, the way social media is. And they can see, like, what's important and what's behind a brand. And it's not just about going to a department store, you know, during a big sale anymore. And especially the generation behind us, these millennials, they want to be involved. They want to be naked. Yeah. Uh, they want to wear <laughs> flip-flops and nothing else. Yeah. Flip-flops are not going out of style. As a matter of fact... They are growing in popularity because it's becoming more and more acceptable to wear flip-flops at places where you couldn't wear it before. I do believe President Obama was the first president ever ever photographed wearing flip-flops, if I may not be mistaken. Am, are, I, right? am correct. I correct? You I am correct. correct. And it used to be that only like surfer dudes, surfer dudettes, would wear flip-flops because that was part of the um, MO. If you wanted to look like a dudette or a dude, you'd wear them. Now people are wearing them. Out to dinner, I'm like what is what is acceptable? Where is acceptable to wear flip flops? You can wear them anywhere. I think anywhere. And um, <clears throat> you know, when when Tim and I were setting up this project and developing the concept, you know, there's a casualization going on around the globe and especially in America. And it's very rare to see people in suits and you know. Look at well, us. Yeah, I mean, this we're on is, Facebook Live. I'm wearing a, a t-shirt and a, and a, and, a, and, a, and a, another t-shirt, and, you're, and I'm dressed up. And you're dressed me. up. <laughs> Does a guy who sells flip flops? have to wear flip-flops a lot to like show people what you do uh i i do i do wear flip-flops more than i i normally do but today i i dressed up for you oh thanks so much <laughs> do you get a pedicure all the time because you're in the flip-flop business i do not <laughs> it's good to know that a guy's a guy and doesn't need to care about his toes all the time all right so um let's talk about who the veterans and what you're doing very special um you're training vets to work in the manufacturing of flip-flops and also making sure they're employed. And what is that whole thing? Where did that, that come from? So, you know, uh, when, when we set up the company, we, we had a, a three-point mantra that was make it better, make it here, and make a difference. And that was the why of the company. And, um, you know, the making it better, we have really cool production processes. We use materials that aren't typically found in this, this category of footwear. Like what do you use? We use, a, 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 like, a polyurethane molded blend that is – uh, much superior to the EVA typically found in, in flip-flops. And it gives, like, a lot of support, resilience, bounce throughout the day as you wear them. 
and we don't market them as orthotic. They're cool, but they're just better, and they wear better. Oh, if you day. said orthotic, nobody's commenting. Right. <laughs> Sorry. So, they're cool, but they're really comfortable? Yeah, very comfortable. So, um, And then, you know, from the Make It Here, obviously, we wanted to prove that we could produce here in America. And the way we did that is we have set up the factory is uber efficient. Um, we are next level efficient. So um, what would be a, you know, a mile long production line abroad is a very different looking process in our facility where um, it's almost just in time all the time. And it allows us to be, we have a lot of flexibility, a lot of innovative um, processes that allow us, because we can't compete on labor wages, so we compete on process and efficiency. Just in time all the time. Sounds like my whole life, just in time all the time. <laughs> did you bring more um, flip-flop colors to show? Okay, because this is guys, girls, um, kids too? Uh, not kids. Not yet. kids, okay. But being that I have a two-year-old, that's uh, quickly on the... Okay, so we've got some pinks here. And um, can anybody, everybody see these? These are Tidal flip-flops. We want to support this company uh, because they're made in America and because they're doing good things for the world and because they're gorgeous and because they're very reasonable. What, are the, what is the price of this, uh, these flip-flops? 26 to $28. So and they're... having big stores just taking orders, who, name some of the stores. Uh, we're currently found in Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's, Lord & Taylor. We did projects with J. Crew, um, most of Urban Outfitters, most of the key American retailers in the fashion group. These are very, very cool. Um, is it uh, safe to say that these are safe to wear? Yeah, I mean... The you know what I'm saying? People, you know, wearing flip-flops all the time can't wear them everywhere for safety reasons. So does it come with a safety warning? Like you can only wear them <laughs> at your mother-in-law's house and not, you know, on the job site. I mean, you no, know... we encourage people to wear them as much as possible, okay. wherever is possible. And going back to your question about the veterans... Yes, talking about the veterans. You know, so the... The point about the efficiencies and the process we developed was we have um, very um, state-of-the-art equipment in the facility, and we needed a workforce that was um, trained and, 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 and capable and motivated, and we have always wanted to make a difference in that sense. And neither Timmy or I serve, but we do feel so lucky every day to have this opportunity. And... We made a commitment to hiring veterans. We also support an organization called Heroes in Transition uh, with a portion of our revenues. And it has been unbelievable um, that the, the hires we've made, um, these guys have created a culture and a brotherhood and a feeling that it's, it's kind of like contagious, like when you're there. It's a, it's a really do you have any cool women working at this company? We do. We have um, actually a mother of one of our, our guys works with us. And... Um, we have, uh, we're just in the process of hiring two other women. How many people are working in the manufacturing plant right now? There's seven people on the seven floor. Seven people. And how fast are you turning out stuff? So we're making about, um, <clears throat> we're making at least uh, six, seven hundred pairs a day with uh, seven people. So it's a pretty good job. And is it bad luck to put new shoes on some kind of table thing? I haven't heard that, but we have, it was an old wives' tale. We got to get everything like on the floor just in case. All right. <laughs> anyway, Tido, we got you to pay attention to a very important business. We'd like to support them. They are manufacturing made in America, and the uh, they've just taken their operations to New Rochelle, New York. This is Tommy Gibb, brother Tim Gibb, founders of Tidal, making great products. Flip flops are going crazy, so buy theirs. Doing good for the world too. Tommy, thank you. Thanks so much for having Pleasure me. Pleasure meeting you. Great, great uh, to have you in studio, and uh, I'll be stopping by the plant. I want to see how do. this operates. Okay? Yeah, we want to have you over. Okay. Uh, uh, stay tuned. More Made in America. What products are being made here that you had no clue? All right? Come on back.